Welcome back everyone to the Moldex 3D webinar series. My name is Alex Baker from the Moldex 3D North America office here in Farmington Hills, Michigan. Just a couple things before we get started. Please keep your microphones muted throughout the entire session to keep the webinar moving along as smoothly as possible. Any questions you may have can be sent through the chat section of Teams and I'll answer those questions in our Q&A session at the end of this webinar. A survey is going to be sent out later this week to help us improve our webinar topics and quality of discussion in the future. You can fill out that survey to receive a copy of this webinar recording to share with your colleagues or review at a later date. Our agenda today is going to be pretty simple. We're going to be talking about compression molding and resin transfer molding uh, to composite manufacturing processes that have sprouted up over the last decade or two. Um, and uh, they can really help us to control the uh, any sort of composite molding that we're doing. Um, just a history of fiber reinforced plastic applications uh, starting out, you know, uh, in the automotive industry, probably one of the most prevalent FRP applications out there. Um, at the beginning of the manufacturing cycle, we had these high end cars that were uh, quite difficult to manufacture. All these parts were, most of them were metal. Uh, some of them were dipping into the composites realm. Um, but as we've uh, advanced the innovation in technology, the uh, knowledge of these applications through the use of simulation and, and um, other knowledge building concepts, um, we've been able to get more into the mass production side of things where we can start replacing those heavier parts with fiber reinforced plastics. But how we use these fiber reinforced plastics or how we generate these fiber reinforced plastic parts is uh, still something that's being innovated to this day. And there's a, a few different applications that we have. So for uh, for the majority of people in the plastics realm, injection molding is probably the most common um, technology for plastics molding in general. Uh, when it comes to fiber reinforced plastics or composite materials, usually uh, we are injecting through one melt entrance or through one gate uh, on this part, and uh, the fibers are kind of oriented along the flow path for the most part. Unfortunately, that doesn't give us a whole lot of control over the fiber orientation, which makes the fiber orientation a lot more diverse and uh, it can be very difficult to control the warpage, the structural mechanics, all those sorts of things on an injection molded part. So there's other technologies that have come out, things like compression molding, where we're taking a bulk charge and we're just kind of squeezing that down to fill out the volume that we desire. We have injection compression molding where we inject a small amount of material. Uh, the flow length is going to be shorter and then, um, you know, we can compress that material uh, by injecting into a more open mold. We can compress that material uh, and maybe get a little bit more control over the fiber orientation versus a uh, an isolated injection molding type of process. And then over the last couple decades, uh, the uh, resin transfer molding RTM has really started to emerge as being a technology that allows us to uh, more or less guarantee the fiber orientation, the mechanical properties that we desire. Um, but the flow of material through a resin mat or a fiber mat is uh, kind of.